the day we are meant to do solar panels. It's raining. Let's see how much water we got in this tank. Well, it's about five eighths full, about 600 gallons. Not too bad. How long have you guys been here? Two hours. A couple so, hours. Yeah. A couple hours? Yeah. Sorry, I just figured you would know. I thought you would know before I would know what time. Nope. That sucks. But I got you good when I said, uh, yeah, you got me. Happening. So we were supposed to do this last week and they canceled and they didn't tell me, but they told Matt. So Matt let me know. And uh, today we're here, me and Darren, for a long time and nobody was here. So I asked Matt, what's your ETA? And he said, oh, they canceled again. I was like, what? <laughs> and he's like, ah, I'm just joking. All right, so earlier I told you guys this thing was 5 eighths full. Matt thinks it's 100% full. Well, I'm 60% sure that it's 100% full. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not putting any money on this because I am not confident. I agree, it's sounds much more hollow right here, but... There was water in this thing when I dumped it out. The overflow could just be condensation. So we're going to find out for sure. Look at that. It's catching them. Drop that camera in there. Heck, you are really far from it. Well, uh, it's pretty deep in there. Let me. Look at my phone. Maybe I can drop my phone and my camera. <laughs> Don't do it. Your truck. Precisely 5.8. Perfect. 0.625. Hey, that's still 600 gallons. That that's ain't too bad. Lot. That's a lot. That'll he water. Said 60%. Yeah. No, he said he was 60% sure. So that we were both right. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, we were both right. <laughs> Just saying. That's enough water to water my putt putt green back here that we're going to put in. And yeah, now that Matt has water, he's thinking about doing a yard and a mm -hmm. golf course. Can we do a lazy river? Is that enough water for a lazy river? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Solar panels have oh, arrived. Look at that. We got batteries. All right, so we got a situation here. This is the ladder that we have. The electrician has the other ladder, but we can't reach. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna back up the five ton next to the building. Then we're gonna put that ladder on top of the five ton. And that's how these guys are gonna get on the roof because they're just standing here doing nothing, waiting on the electrician. There it is, six foot four, by the way. Look how tall this thing is. Gotta do what you gotta do. Man, this thing is versatile, Matt. See, tell my wife this thing is a good purchase. It's already paying off. And we have ladders. All right, so those guys up there are already starting the installation on solar panels. So I'm gonna go up there so I can show you guys what's going on over there. And Matt is going to do an interview down here. So make sure you go Go check it out on his channel, Off The Ranch. All right, so they're installing the brackets for the panels. So what goes on here? So this is gonna be the rail where the main panel is gonna be resting on. These are just brackets specifically. Okay, so these are brackets and then you're gonna have a rail that goes across? Yes, sir. Which way are the panels gonna be mounted? They're gonna be portrait, so it's gonna be lengthwise. We're gonna have two rows, one right here, one right there. It's gonna be the four rails going across and each row is gonna rest on two sets of rails. Nice. So how many panels are gonna be, be able to get up here? We're gonna get uh, 12. 12. 12 panels up yes, here, sir. wow. So this entire thing's gonna be full of panels. Nice. All right, Josh, I'm gonna be asking a lot of questions, so All right. get ready. <laughs> well, yeah, so we're just mounting this right here. These are the mounting brackets. We got some uh, bolts that'll mount those rails. Slide uh -huh. through there, T we call them T-bolts. Slide through there and mount on the rail. And then mount the panels on top of that. Nice. Nice, good deal, man. All right, so you see these guys are measuring. What? What's the spacing you guys are using? Four foot. So they're, they're uh, putting in brackets every four feet. And then down there you see the, uh, you see the, uh, the rail that they're going to install. What is this? How do, how do these attach? Well, it just has a sticky uh, adhesive back there to kind of seal it up from the, when you penetrate the roof. Oh, okay. Of course, when, once we've got them all in place, we'll tighten this screw down and then put a T-bolt through there and lock it into the rail. So, so you're just gluing all these down where they go, and then yeah. he's coming back behind you and putting the yeah. uh, the actual 
screws in. Screws too. in. Yes, sir. Just a little extra protection for, uh, to seal up the pin Now, portions. the panels are going to sit on top of here, so that the panel itself is going to add more protection from water? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For sure. Yes, awesome. Sir. So these uh, rails are attached with a with T-bolt. Yes. There's, the, uh, there's a groove that runs the length of the rail. So this is the T-bolt that they're installing. Okay, put it like this, then you rotate it. That's it, it attaches. Perfect, and now it's nicely secured. All right, so this is the back of the panel. It has uh, pigtails and one pigtail connects to the previous panel. The next pigtail connects to the next panel. And of course, they're all lined up in order so that you can read the wire. You don't want to put one on the top and the other one on the bottom because then they won't read. It. Are these connected in series or parallel? Yes, sir, these are series. In series? Thank you, JR. So yes, this is our expert, JR. Uh, he knows what's going on with the panel. So I got to ask him so that he can tell me what's going on daisy chain so they're daisy chained together thank you Jim. that's the correct terminology the end clip just hit slide it on here and then the panel will sit on top of here and it'll lip it and oh it'll just clamp it down yes sir oh then, well that's pretty cool on the other ones in between the panels so if you gotta have space you'll put these in between oh i see nice well that's fairly simple yes sir put them together like that snug that down perfect all right so down here this is the inverter Mm -hmm. All right, they're getting all that ready to go. And of course, these are the batteries. We're gonna mount the inverter right there. And that's still going to give us enough room to foam behind it. This entire wall is gonna be plywood. Hey, Darren. Howdy. So that's, this entire wall is going to be plywood. So inverter goes right there. And then these batteries, we're gonna put them on a rack after these guys are done and we get the, the walls foamed. Check out this work light they have over here. It's pretty neat. Yeah, I like it's it. Just it a little, little tripod, deploys. Looks like it collapses pretty short. I carry two of them. Very nice. They have a mounting plate on the wall and then they have a mating surface on the uh, inverter. So now it's just gonna hang off of that. There it is, to secure it. Now they're just gonna daisy chain all the panels together. And uh, where is the main cord gonna come from? Sorry, what was that? The main cord, the main, I'm sure all of these are gonna go to one cord. Yes, sir, so we got the converter coming in over here. I think how they plan to do it. That's gonna be the electrician's job. But they're probably gonna take conduit down here and then around to that corner is what I'm thinking. Actually, the inverter's just right there. Okay, it's on this side? Yeah, right. so. so. It's coming straight down. Just go right in there. Yes, sir. All right. The wire there, he's connecting all of the panels together. We have our first row here. We have a YouTuber Six in the wild. Panels. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> all right, so they got the first row of panels installed. That's six panels. They're going to do another six down here. Guys, if you're watching my video and you want to see a different perspective of this, you can go to Off the Ranch, check out his version of it. A better perspective. A humble perspective. <laughs> so now that they have all the wires connected, they're gonna actually zip tie them to the rail underneath. They don't want anything touching the roof. All right, so I had the electricians move the panel over here or the inverter because they have to poke pipes straight through and that's the back of the building. That's where we're gonna have the generator. So if we went this way, we're gonna have to go outside the wall, down, 
around and into the generator so it really didn't make sense to have it on this wall so we moved it to that wall all right so the solar panel installation is done now the plan is to bring the pipe down the side well it's going to go down the roof first and then down the side straight into that pipe because that's where the inverter is right on the other side of that wall however christian here has a little problem it's not a problem right we're no, not going to call a it a problem no. all right just a little bit of finesse that's all there you go so what he's going to have to do as he comes up he's going to have to tuck in under that downspout and go around it and then go up to the roof we'll see if he can get it done so this is called a pipe bender and you wouldn't believe what it's used for you're gonna hear it now the electricians in the comment section oh there's a ton of electricians <laughs> on my comment section oh you should have just had me do it yeah they all say that but they won't show up <laughs> <laughs> uh oh shots fired all right look at that perfect Thank you, sir. Thank you. I learned from the best, Frank Mackay. If you're hearing this, it's because of you. All right, so we got it all piped. When I say we, I mean the electricians. <laughs> <laughs> and they have the wires, they're feeding them to the inverter. I hear it. There it is. Yes, sir. These are going to land into these terminals right here. Oh, okay. So it says PV1 plus, PV1 negative, PV2. 2 plus and PV2 negative. Now those are gonna be each individual strings. So PV plus means positive. Positive is red and negative is black. And the same goes for this. But so the reason we have four leads is because we have- Two separate strings. Right, so up there on the roof, they actually did not join the panels together. They put six together and then the other six together. Right. That's how you ended up with, okay. Hooking them up in series. Okay. And so if you want to add more panels, you just attach to each one of those strings and you can expand your, your panels. So if you want to add more panels, do you, you, okay, so you add more panels up there. Oh, and then you just, I see, and then you just add to the little daisy chain cables, right? Right. You just disconnect them, continue your line, and then sometimes if it's too short, no big deal. They make connectors, you just make a new connector, expand it, and continue it on to the end of the chain. Oh, I see. This is where your batteries are gonna hook up. The generator hooks up. And then, and then oh, your, okay. So these right here, this is gen, and this is uh, grid, mm -hmm. which is your local power, and then this is your load. And this is this breaker right here. Mm -hmm. These are both. These are all three breakers. This one is going to feed your inside your shop. The grid is what's coming from your local power. You don't have a local power because you're going to be an off a grid system. Right. So grid, and then your generator is going to be hooked up onto this one. I see. And then your system will automatically be able to detect power coming from the generator, or it's going to use battery or power from the batteries. And then whatever you set it at the compete capacity from your batteries so you don't over drain them and you don't damage the batteries your inverter will be able to know that and it should be able to communicate with your generator also so if you run out of battery backup then the generator will kick on and it should switch over seamlessly without any power loss so awesome. if you have any type of um that's the beauty about having a battery backup system is if you have a sensitive electronics or anything like that, you're not going to have a hiccup. It's going to be smooth transition. You're not going to have that little that little three seconds delay from having a generator. This is going to be able to, to do all that. Awesome. Awesome. So much more reliable. All right. That sounds like a lot of good stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Moment of truth. Why are we getting far away from it? Yeah. If the electrician walks away from it, I'm going to walk away from it. <laughs> PV is on. We solar. We're at 68% charge. Crazy. And here your kilowatt. We're at negative. Nothing's producing right now. Which we should have be having something. We have DC power. AC is alternating current, which we have none, because that's our our grid. And then normal, 
I guess normal means it's generating, which we haven't. We're not generating anything right now. There we go. Did you hear that click? Oh, wow, we did it. <laughs> now, now we're producing power. So right now we're producing 0 0.85 kilowatts. That's power feeding into the unit, which is in return charging the battery since we're not pulling anything from our load side. We're generating power to charge the battery. We're at 66% and we went up 2%. So that's good. And we're getting 0 0.8. So it's, this is the actual unit is probably taking 10 to 12 kilowatts just to run the unit. And then whatever's left over is in return feeding the batteries. So let's see if we can put a load on it. Hey, Yay, we, got power. we got power. And it's hooked up correctly. So when you see this is, uh, when it's right here, it says correct. See it right there at the very mm -hmm. bottom. And that tells us that it's wired correctly. And if it was wired incorrectly in any other way, this would tell us so. Awesome. And then to check to make sure that we have a proper ground and neutral, we can trip the GFI with this button. And it should trip it. And it does. So we're good. And then we just reset it. And you're hot again. All right, so we put a heat gun over here. And so load. Which which one is it? Luke? The light bulb going out. So we have sunlight coming in, light bulb, and batteries going out. Oh, I see. Turn it off. You're gonna have a little there little it is. <laughs> delay. Cool. So the solar panels are producing power, right? It comes to here. What does the inverter actually do? The inverter is what it trans it converts the DC power to AC power. Okay. That's why it's very big and bulky because it's having to convert the two powers. Okay. But the panels are running at a higher volts, which in return is running more efficient, which is able to charge your batteries more efficiently. So you can disconnect or turn off the panels right here. Correct. Correct. However, they are still, the leads are still hot. Hot, always. There's no turning those panels off. Okay. There's no safety switch. So it is very important that nobody messes with that unless you're a licensed electrician. Absolutely. If you're some uh, guy, you're going up there, you're going to clean your panels and you think you can just disconnect them, think about it twice because you will have an arc come across your face. Okay. And it's not pretty. That's very important to keep in mind. Okay. Those panels are always hot. Even if you disconnect it from here, the panels can still kill you. Correct? Correct. All right. Absolutely. Thank you. Good job. Very, very clean installation. The here. So we have 45 going in and 40 going out. That's just because this box is using up some of the electricity. That yes, sir. So there is going to be a little bit of power loss because it's not truly efficient. Right. And all inverters do that. Absolutely. And between brands, some are more efficient than others. So what do you think about the installation? Are they all the same? No, absolutely not. I think personally, this one was very simple. Plug and play, very self-explanatory, lots of labels, uh, lots of explaining on how to do it. I mean, I didn't even, I've been doing electrical for a very long time. So when I open this and look in there, I know exactly what I'm looking at and how to hook it up. And I didn't even actually have to read the manual. That's how simple it was to hook this up. Now, if you're gonna do it at home, I would recommend getting a licensed electrician and doing it properly. But if you're trying to save some money and thinking about doing this yourself as a DIY, I would definitely recommend you looking at the manual and going through it and reading it very thoroughly and understanding what is being hooked up where, why you're phasing it in these ways, and why you're landing them in certain locations. You like it, Matt? I love it. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. We'll see you guys next time. We are. Texas Barnum Media. We are Texas Barnum Media. Woo! <laughs> Thank you.